Welcome back to Rev It Up Bowling. My name is Jason Robarge, and today what we're gonna be doing is trying to figure out how to play fresh. You know, where you should start when you do go to a tournament, or if it is league, kind of what ball motion you're looking for and where to play. To start, what I did today is I brought out most of my tournament arsenal, the balls that come with me the most tournaments, not necessarily like what I throw in league. It's gonna be bowling balls that I'm comfortable with and I know very, very well. Uh, what I did was I laid out house shot on 16. It's a very forgiving pattern, easy to make different shapes with for most league bowlers just to play anywhere on the lane. On 15, I don't know the pattern. The idea is to kind of take what I'm gonna teach you guys on house shot, transfer it to this sport pattern, try to get an idea on what it is, also guess what it is as well, probably by feet, and, and get lined up as well. When we are talking about getting lined up on a tournament pattern that you don't know what it is, or if it is league shot and you wanna kinda of start all over, usually with league shots it's similar every week, you kinda of get the same idea. But if we don't know what the pattern is, we wanna get lined up, that's what we're gonna be covering today. House shot. This house shot, 41 foot, very easy. With any shot, if you're trying to figure out where you should play in the ball motion you're looking for, what I always tell people is to always throw your benchmark ball. The benchmark ball is the most controllable, smoothest ball in your bag. Typically, it's gonna be something like a symmetric solid, maybe hybrid for lower rev rate players. It may be an ASIM. But the general ball motion we're looking for is smooth, it reads the mid lanes, it slows down, and can control the pocket. But when we bowl on an unknown pattern, I always like to tell people, start where you're most comfortable, or start around the second arrow. We don't want to be in fourth arrow more than likely to test fresh simply because it's super far left and you're going to run out of room quick. We want to try to get lined up kind of around that second arrow depending on the pattern. Obviously, if it's a really short pattern or really long pattern, those are kind of two extremes that you need to take into account. But for the most part, most medium 38 to 43-ish feet, you're going to be somewhere around the second era. When we talk about different bowling balls on different shots, you know, we, one person may talk about a really front to back rolly bowling ball. The other person might talk about, you know, a super skid flippy bowling ball. Now that's not necessarily the angles that we want to play. Rarely ever do I play a significant skid flippy motion simply because it's really hard to predict. And usually it's all or nothing, good strike, four nine. There's two significant parts to ball motion. One, how the ball goes down the lane to you know, 50, 55 foot, somewhere around there, and then how the ball sets up at the pocket and goes through the pocket. If we can master especially how the ball goes through the pocket, everything else behind it will become much easier. When I get lined up, what I'm doing is looking at about, obviously going through the pocket in the right way, splitting the eight, nine roughly. We're always kind of looking between that three to five degrees through the pocket. Now, we might not know the numbers associated, but we've all seen that split the eight, nine strike. That's kind of what we're looking for, right? We, what we can do is take the two parts, figure out how the ball is gonna go through the pins, and then how to get the ball to, to get to the pins, of course. So I'm gonna start out with kind of my benchmark ball, the hazmat or the low flare right now. If I need something that hooks a little bit less, a little bit, sometimes a little bit quicker, low flare, something that hooks a little bit more front to back, hooks more overall, uh, go with the hazmat. Uh, I did throw, like on this pattern, the breakaway. Really good, shot 300 with it last week, and that provided me that smooth, controllable shape. Now I know this house shot, I know it's gonna overhook. However, for what we're doing, we're gonna be just talking about ball motion and using Specta in order to show the shapes. What we're gonna do is get the hazmat going down the lane. When this goes down the lane, pay attention to the Specto, see where it starts hooking. If this, and obviously something doesn't hook too much, so of course, this is probably gonna hook too much. I end up moving left. I wish I could stay in here for league, that'd be nice. Okay, that ball hooked too much overall. Now, it was smooth, it was in the dry, of course, a lot. However, it's not necessarily predictable, simply because it hooks too much. If we see this, right, if we see that that ball is it's smooth, but it does take off, pretty early, you know, that started hooking at the 35 foot mark. We know we are gonna have to need to find more oil or find something that'll blend that, that friction out more. Now for me being a little more heavy handed, I'm gonna move left, try to get lined up with this ball. And then I'm gonna throw other bowling balls to show you the differences in ball shape, right? What you're looking for and what you're not. What we need to do is we need to find some oil, right? We need to get the ball, get, get down the lane a little bit more and see kind of where it goes at the break point at that point. We're gonna move, we'll move 10 left, 
probably going to be around the 13, 14 board at the arrows, but still pr try to be around that second arrow down lane. It's about 10. Perfect. All right. What we saw in that one, if you look at spec though, the ball made it much farther down the lane. It did over hook still. But now we're going to start questioning, is the ball too much ball or do I need to start moving left more? Now on a sport pattern, typically I'm going to try to avoid going left pretty early just because it, it makes it harder to blend the pattern out in ways. Also, if I don't know the pattern, safer play wouldn't be to cross tons of boards. It would be to try to play up the lane a little bit more. What we're going to do is move a little bit more left, get lined up with this. Um, I'm going to guess it's probably another three boards or so. I'm trying to hit down lane a little bit. All right, that was money. Let's analyze that shot a little bit. That one is somewhere around 15 at the arrows. Again, around that eight to 10, 10 board down lane break point. What I saw with that ball was phenomenal ball motion. The number one thing that I look at is how it went through the pins. That split the eight, nine, it's set up, it rolled at the pins. It wasn't too shallow, it wasn't too sharp, and it looked really, really good. Now, bringing the ball back, you know, from 50 feet towards the, towards the uh, foul line. What I saw with that one was it started picking up around the 39 foot mark, kind of rolled forward around the 43, 44 foot mark, and it slowed down. Typically a bowling ball, we want to see it slow down, right? We need to see it slow down to transition, but also when you have a ball that doesn't slow down enough, it's gonna be very hard to control that break point because it's still trying to hook through the pocket. We still want that skid hook roll phase. Uh, the most important one is the roll phase because that's gonna be consistent across almost any pattern. We still want the ball to roll up at the pocket. Now a roll phase may be a little bit longer, a little bit a little shorter depending on what we're bowling on, if it's a shorter long pattern. But again, that last little bit, how the ball goes through the pins is consistent on any pattern. When you guys talk about, oh, I was hitting the pocket all day long, but I was leaving 10 pins, seven pins, you know, whatever the case may be. If you're doing that, take a look how the ball is going through the pins. If your ball is deflecting and it's taking out the nine pin straight on or even to the right of the nine pin, well, it's not driving enough. You're probably gonna leave either ring tens or seven pins. The ball, if you're four nining, four pinning, you know, even the four tens sometimes, if your ball is just trucking through the pocket too much, it's not slowing down enough. You're not gonna get proper deflection of the pins and you're gonna leave some weird stuff. Now that we're kind of lined up with that hazmat, what I'm gonna be doing now is throwing some other equipment to just show you guys different shapes. These probably won't strike all the time, but we're gonna be talking about just ball shape, right? What we're looking for on fresh. Now, if this was fresh, I would 100% play that shot. That looked beautiful. However, you know, that might not be there. Let's just say this ball, you know, doesn't it slow down too much and we want to get something that gets down lane a little bit more and maybe a little bit quicker to respond. What I'm gonna throw is the Scorpion Low Flare. It flares a little bit less, gets down lane, gets through the, the gunk a little bit more and will respond a little bit more quickly. So we're gonna stay in the same place and let's see where this goes. All right. That was a really, really good example. If you guys look at spec though and see how it goes through the pins, that ball simply did not slow down enough. It went, it wasn't high, it was high-ish in the pocket, but where it went through the pocket and ended up going off the back of the deck, it took out the eight pin pretty hard. Kind of missed the nine a little bit. What that tells me is that ball, which it got to the pocket, it made generally good shape, but it didn't enter the pocket in the right way. We know that this is probably not gonna be the ball. The reason for that is, is if I move left into some more oil, like it went high, right? If I move left into more oil, it's probably just gonna get sharper because it's not burning energy up. I'm gonna move left a little bit just to just kind of show you guys what that looks like. All right, that didn't look too bad. As you can see, I almost wrapped to 10. Yes, I struck, but I hate the ball motion. It, that one I moved a little bit left. It almost went too far down lane. It needs more teeth. It needs to slow down a little bit more, kind of in that mid lane. When you take that into account, we're gonna throw a really big, massive diff, very aggressive. This is a bowling ball that's it's gonna slow down the mids and the fronts pretty well and be smoothish down lane. Uh, however, it does still have an ASIM, but it likes to flip over a little bit. <sighs> We're gonna stay in the same place as the other ball and see what it gives us. Oh, I sent that one right. All right, well, it slowed down a ton because it was in the dry a ton. I threw that one pretty far right. As we can see with that ball, it started hooking significantly earlier than that low flare, and it's set up pretty well to the pocket. Now, 
It did exactly what I wanted to as far as going through the pocket and everything, but the transition was, it was smooth, but it did flip over pretty quickly. This one, I'm just gonna keep it in the oil a little bit and just see what ball motion that gives us. All right, so that ball motion is quick. And that one I got in the dry, or sorry, in the oil more. It stored more energy, and it was very flippy when it did get down lane. When you think of an ASIM solid, you're not thinking flippy. It's still an ASIM. It's gonna flip over, right? That has just too much oil on it. Just like this ball, standing right, it's just too much ball. It hooks too much where we're trying to play. And if I did move left, it's just gonna get quicker. If I move right, it's just gonna overhook, right? That kind of tells me that I've thrown three bowling balls now. One of them gives me a phenomenal look, the hazmat, right? It slows down the right place, it splits the eight, nine. That's what we're looking for. With those other two bowling balls, one was a little too far down lane. It looked good, but it wasn't going through the pins properly. Then you have the Black Widow. Didn't really look great, but it did strike, right? But it was getting to the pocket in the right way, or it was, it was entering the pocket close to the right way. However, it just didn't roll enough. It didn't slow down enough when I did move left into oil. The next part of this video, uh, what we're gonna be doing is I'm gonna be bowling a mystery pattern. I don't know what it is. What I'm gonna do is take what we did here, go on 15, and just try to get lined up using what I have here. Again, still talking about ball motion, right? What we're gonna do is get all set up, get moved over on lane 15, and we'll resume here in a second. All right, now that we moved everything over to lane 15, this is a mystery sports shot. I don't know what's out here. If it's in the system, I'm sure I've bowled on it, but I don't know what it is. So again, to reiterate how to play fresh and more how to get lined up or where to start in order to figure out where to line up. I'm gonna start around the second arrow, try to get it piped up around second arrow, you know, just give me an idea on how the, what the length is and then also kind of where to play. What I'm gonna be doing, again, around second arrow with my benchmark ball, which is my hazmat or my scorpion. Also the sneak attack saw a little bit, but it's more like a left to right kind of ball. Let's see here. Up second arrow, going up the boards, my fun. All right, so that was probably like nine to eight down lane, roughly second arrow. What we saw with that shot was obviously it went through the face. Well, why did it go through the face? When I threw the ball, it looked pretty good. I'd have to say this is a little bit longer-ish pattern because it didn't see the mid lanes hard. And it's definitely not a short pattern because it didn't duck hook left. The ball just overall hooked too much. It looked pretty good, maybe didn't slow down just enough, but for the most part, it did have generally decent ball shape. It trucked a little bit too much. It, it was still a little too continuous. Now that I know that this ball creates a decent ball shape, what I'm gonna do is just move left a little bit, try to find a little bit more oil. If I had to guess, this is a little bit longer pattern. Playing near the pocket probably would be a little advantageous, <sighs> but it could also be super flat and this is just gonna hook off my hand. We're gonna take a three and two left. We're gonna be somewhere around 11, 12 down at the arrows. Again, still trying to hit that eight, nine down lane, roughly. All right, as you can see, I struck, which is great. I did get the ball farther right than I wanted, which is great. It did come back, right? Kind of tells me it's not totally flat. It does have some ratio to it because I did get it right a little bit. However, everything looked good until it hit the pocket and that ball kept going left. It, it didn't slow down as much as I wanted, and it really took out that eight pin straight on. Well, if you guys go back to my sim versus a sim video, we're gonna understand what a sims and sims do on the back end of the pattern. This is a symmetric, right? It likes to continue off the spot. We need a ball or a hand position or more surface to get it going a little bit more front to back, burn a little bit more energy, and it can roll through the pocket, not not hook through the pocket. We're gonna do like a two and oh, give the pocket a little bit more and see if that ball slows down. <sighs> We're on our third shot, right? We need to, obviously in practice, you're gonna anywhere from eight to 12 shots probably. We don't wanna go above eight or nine because then we're going into our first game and that doesn't help us much. That was in. And it just went kinda high. That was in a lot more than my other shots at the break point. With that one, it did hold the pocket off, but it did leave a nine pin. Generally, this ball motion's decent. However, it is still a little bit too continuous. I'm gonna wanna go do a ball that's a little bit more front to back and can roll through the pocket a little bit more. Um, and that is gonna be the Black Widow. Now, this ball does hook more. However, I'm hoping with the teeth in the cover stock and that big flaring core, it burns more energy and I don't have to move too far off of where I am now. So we're gonna stay in the same place. If I had to guess, it's gonna go through the face because it does hook more, but we'll see.
Yep, yep, definitely hooks more. It did slow down more. However, that ball was, I wouldn't say it was in. I would say it's the most in I'd probably want to be as far as down lane. We're gonna throw another shot because I don't think that was overly great. Nah, nah. So I got it right, it struck, but it plowed through the head pin and the eight pin. Still a little bit too continuous. Uh, ball just hooks too much currently. It needs more friction to slow down. In that case, what we're gonna go to is a slightly, slightly smoother reaction. The symmetric sink attack, I'm gonna see what this gives us. And the whole idea with this one is just less ball. Now I'm hoping with the small diff, continue as hard with the solid cover stock. Much, much better. All right, so that one was smooth, very, very smooth. Into the pocket and it split the eight nine. This ball was just too much ball. It kind of slowed down where we wanted but it's just too much ball. It hooks too much. We get it right, it does come back. However, it's just too continuous. It takes the head, uh, eight pin out. Same with this ball. Too continuous on the back end. Gave us much more room than this one. However, the ball change was just too much. It was too different, too much ball. We wanna go to a, a solid cover stock. Kind of gets that lane blended out more. Now that I did strike, we're gonna play around with it. When you guys strike in practice, that doesn't necessarily mean stay there. As you guys are gonna go through a game or two a line it just in practice. If you guys strike in practice, I would usually move a little left off that because it's gonna break down in practice. Also pay attention to carry down. You'll see a lot of carry down in practice. You might be striking, 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 and then all of a sudden the ball is just goes three more feet. That's just carry down. Do this again. Let's see if I can repeat a shot. That'd be cool, Ace, right? That was okay, I hit my foot, but that ball left the four pin. It looks good, honestly. Um, for being a big miss like that on a sport pattern, I'll take that all day. As long as I'm not leaving stupid, stupid stuff, I can grind a 2-0 to a 2 teen, just leaving four pins. Now that we have the right ball in mind, what we're gonna wanna do is, I wanna move a little bit left, see what it gives me, especially if we have a shot or two in practice, throw it a spare or play around with what you got. We're gonna move a little left. And we pulled it a ton. Yeah, I was definitely aiming for Brooklyn. See how it kind of split the eight, nine, sorta? Didn't work out too well. That was right. And it still came back. That kind of tells me there that I personally like having recovery right, because I have the rev rate to bring it back. However, there's some times where you might want a little bit of shim, or you might want recovery right, or you only have a choice of one or the other. We're not robots, we're humans, we make mistakes. We don't throw it the same every time. We want some miss room. That kind of tells me I have some miss room right, which is sweet. Let's go ahead and throw the same shot. Hook. Very nice. So I know that that is definitely the ball to throw. For shits and giggles, we are going to throw this ball. The Archetype Hybrid. Now, this ball is probably gonna be too quick, too clean. It is a hybrid, however it is HK22, and it does, it's, I like to say it's like a pearl dominant hybrid. It does get down lane pretty well, and does flip. This probably won't work, but we'll see. Just to guys give you a comparison on, it's also a lot bigger ball than this thing. That actually looked really, really good. Since those balls did strike, they did look a little different down lane. I would more than likely go with the sneak attack simply because it's smoother and I could probably control a little bit better. Uh, a sim like this on fresh, I'm sure it's fine. I don't necessarily like to play sharper angles like this on fresh. Just it work. It doesn't work as many times as a smooth ball or motion like that. Try and make that same shot. <laughs> that looks good, honestly. All right. Now we're at the instance where two balls work, right? Go with whatever makes most sense to you as far as comfortability goes. If you can control a sharper angle and you're comfortable with it, do that. If you want a little bit smoother ball reaction, and you control that a little bit more. At the end of the day, you gotta do what's ever comfortable, especially on fresh, where it's not broken down, the ratio is maybe lower, you're gonna have less room. How shot, man. Go with whatever's more comfortable. If you're not confident and comfortable with your shots, you're never gonna hit them properly. I'm gonna throw this one more time, because that looks Hook a lot. See, that gives me good recovery as well. I'd probably still go with the sneak attack because I felt like I did have more room. I labeled those three. That one was a little bit right, but I think the sneak attack it will be 
pretty well. So just to reiterate kind of what we went over today, how to play fresh, where to start, and how to transition off of that. Number one thing, go with something consistent, smooth, controllable, as far as the ball goes, and you're very comfortable with. I personally don't like the average bowler to throw a brand new ball in a tournament. In league, if you just you know want to learn it, that's fine. But in a tournament setting where you don't know the shot, or you never bowl on the shot, throw something you're comfortable with. It might have a million games on it, but as long as you're comfortable with it and you understand that ball, you're gonna be able to read the pattern better. As far as ball motion goes, any pattern we're talking about, short pattern, long pattern, medium pattern, whatever the case may be, the number one consistent is how the ball goes through the pin. We want the ball to split the eight, nine. Obviously some houses promote lighter hit or whatever the case may be, but it's all consistent with the ball rolling towards the pins, not through the pins and not rolling out away from the pin. We want that ball to set up and roll at that three to five degrees if you're a nerd through the pocket. And that looks like any shot you've ever crushed the pocket, right? That's splitting the eight, nine, right? We want to get a ball that gets through the pins or gets to the pins and can set up at that ball motion. If you figure that part out, you can kind of bring that shot back and figure out how to get to that point. As we saw with these bowling balls, obviously what happens on the first 55 feet of the lane will affect how the ball goes through the pins. Now, at the end of the day, the most important thing is how the ball goes through the pins, it's not necessarily how we get there, but we are still looking for a smooth and controllable ball motion. With the sneak attack and this ball on this sport pattern, which, the ace, what was the sport pattern? Oh, the team, okay. It's the 2023 men's nationals pattern, which makes a lot of sense because we did have to play big angles, kind of what I was just doing on fresh. It's like 41 foot. It's kind of what I was mentioning. 42, something like that. On a pattern like that, as you can see, I had two balls that worked, right? I had the sneak attack and the archetype. Now they are very, very different bowling balls, right? They did provide different shapes going down lane, but the result was the same. They slowed down enough, they went through the pocket in the proper angle, and they split the eight nine. At that point is, what, what ball gives you the most room? If it's shim or if it's recovery, you know, get the left, get the right, pick your poison on what you're kind of looking for. Both these balls provided me much more shape. It was able to recover more. However, I'd probably go with the sneak attack just because it is a slightly smoother ball motion and I feel like I can transition off of it and it won't be as susceptible to larger moves just because the archetypes is a big bowling ball. So with that said, that was kind of the review on how I line up on a pattern I don't know or just in general on what I'm looking for at a tournament or whatever the case may be. If you guys have any questions as far as ball motion or anything that I omitted today, please let me know in the comments. My name is Jason Robarge. Please remember to like, comment, subscribe. Helps us a ton. We're having a bowling. Much love. Peace.